There are three important things that you should know if you plan to work on your house wiring. One, don't get zapped. Two, don't burn the house down. And three, know what you do with. It's not normally the policy of ACME to encourage people to do things that they really shouldn't be doing. But there are too many people willing to jump right in with no knowledge of how the system works or the implications of a sloppy job. So, number one, the electric potential of ordinary house current is enough to seriously hurt or kill you. If you don't know how to safely disable a circuit, don't work on it. Number two, all things that conduct electrical current have a property called resistance. Current flowing across a resistance causes heat to be generated. That was a scale model demonstration. The wire I just burned was copper wire with 10 amperes of current flowing. Currents in the house circuits go as high as 40 or 50 amps. The wires are larger and have less resistance, but this should point out the need to use the correct gauge wire in a circuit. This also demonstrates what the fuses or circuit breakers are for. Resistance isn't just a factor in wire heating. Every connection in the system can be a sore point. A loose connection can develop resistance in several different ways. No matter how the connection develops resistance, it results in heat. For this reason, all connections of any type have to be in metal or approved plastic boxes. Number three, here's how it works. The electrical energy comes into your house as 240 volts. If you're older, you say 220 volts, but the voltage is sort of nominal anyway, so call it whatever you want. The actual voltage varies from place to place and time to time. The 240 volts comes to your street as about 5,000 volts. A transformer on one of the poles serves you and your neighbors with your 240. So by now there are a lot of people hopping up and down shouting at me, doesn't this idiot know that we have 120 volts in North America, not 240? That's what it says on my toaster. Well, I'm just not being just continental with my 240 volt figure. The transformer that supplies your house supplies 240 volts to it, but the transformer winding is tapped in the middle. The tap on the transformer is also fed to your house, and the tap is spiked into the earth as well, neatly dividing the 240 volts in half. This explains why three wires come into your house. The grounding of the center tap is necessary for all sorts of reasons, from lightning protection to people protection. If no part of the system was attached to ground at any point, little leakages here and there would have us all dancing in the street. The grounding at the house is usually done to a metal water pipe entering your house from the water main. Don't ever fool with this. If you lift your ground, all of the metal parts of the electrical system will assume an unknown potential with respect to the damp basement floor and the kitchen sink. So, we have 240 volts split and grounded in the center. The white wire entering the box is the center tap. Its official name is neutral. The black and red wires are the two ends of the transformer winding. Sometimes these wires are black and black. Red and black are interchangeable in house wiring, so we have to refer to them as the hot legs of the circuit. Between them is a potential of 240 volts. From either hot leg to the white is 120 volts. All of the metal parts of the system are connected together by bare copper ground wires. At the entrance panel, neutral and ground are connected together. Most of the circuits in a house are connected from neutral to one side of the service, red or black, and operate on 120 volts. Neutral and ground are at the same electrical potential, but neutral can be used to carry current. Ground never does. It's there for safety. Branch circuits are protected by 15 amp fuses or circuit breakers. Many lights and or outlets can be daisy chained to one branch as long as you don't expect to draw more than 15 amps total. Usually the local electrical codes will limit the number of outlets on one branch to eight or so, but it's silly and inconvenient to share that many anyway. There are 20 amp branch circuits too, but they need a larger gauge wire. Heavy duty loads like electric stoves and clothes dryers are connected across the entire winding of the transformer. And they work on 240 volts. But even though these are 240 volt appliances, the neutral is still important to them. The lights in the stove and the motor in the dryer work on 120 volts, so they're connected between the neutral and one of the hot legs. The circuit breakers for these are doubles, one on each leg. The handles are connected together so that if one leg blows, the other one's shut off as well. 
Nowadays, kitchens have to have these. It's a split receptacle. The neutral is wired conventionally, but each half the outlet is fed from its own branch. This allows the wanton connection of heavy loads like toasters, coffee pots, and things like that. The tab that ordinarily connects the two hot sides is broken away, and the split halves each have their own wire to their own breaker. This raises an interesting question. If one side has a toaster connected and the other's empty, the 10 amps to the toaster is flowing in both the hot and the neutral. If an identical load uses 10 amps from the other side, is there now 20 amps flowing in the common neutral? Nope, not if it's wired right. Split receptacles sharing a common neutral have to be connected to different legs of the service. With two identical loads connected to the outlet, no current will flow in the neutral. Both loads are actually connected in series across the 240 volt supply. The neutral in a split outlet only ever has to carry the difference between the two sides, which will never be more than 15 amps in this example. The rules and regulations of local electrical codes were created to standardize electrical installations in any given area, but they also ensure that no potentially dangerous situations can occur in a seemingly safe layout. The case of a split receptacle accidentally connected to two fuses or breakers that are on the same side of the transformer is a great example. It would apparently function normally, but the neutral wire can be forced to carry twice its rated current. Fooling with house wiring can be dangerous for all sorts of reasons, so when Uncle Clem or the neighbor drops in to do a little weekend work for you, ask him a few simple questions, you know, about grounding and the 120, 240 volt thing. If they can't answer those questions to your satisfaction, well...